In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can make your OpenGL code more efficient by using index buffers. So in a previous tutorial, we made the triangle that you see here. If you remember, the triangle had three vertices and each vertex had a different color. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about something that looks like this. Now, you may say to yourself, what's the big deal? After all, it is just three triangles and we can use what we learned before and just dump more data onto the vertex buffer. So for example, we can take the first triangle that has three vertices and the second triangle which has three vertices and the third triangle which has three vertices and then just put them onto the vertex buffer. However, if we look at it slightly differently, you can see that there's really only six vertices. And this makes us question whether or not there might be a more efficient way to do things. Now, if you think about it, the reason that we might be able to do it more efficiently is because the three vertices that you see here are used more than once. For example, if you look at this vertex here on the left, you can see that it's used in the top triangle as well as the lower left triangle. And then practically speaking, most of the models that we work with don't have holes like the one that you see here. So more realistically, we would actually have four triangles here for a total of 12 vertices. And this is really where you see a big difference because knowing what we know now, we would store 12 vertices, whereas really we might be able to get away with just six. So you probably figured out why this is a big deal. The way that we were doing it before was really inefficient. First of all, it's going to take up more memory. You have to understand that later on in the course, each vertex is going to take up about 48 bytes. Now, where does the 48 bytes come from? 12 bytes of that's going to be for position because of X, Y, and Z. 16 bytes of that's going to be for color, RGBA. 12 more bytes of that are going to be for normal, which we'll talk about later. And then eight bytes of that are going to be used for something called a texture coordinate. Also, you have to understand that because there's so much redundancy, it's going to take up more processing power. Think about what we had in the previous example. We're going to have to do mathematical operations like translation and rotation, and we need to do that for every vertex that we have. And therefore, when we specify more than one vertex in exactly the same position, we have redundant computations. This is exactly the reason that we have an index buffer. Now, if you remember, we only had six real vertices. However, for this explanation, we're going to renumber these to be 0 through 5. So using these points, we're going to build the index buffer by specifying which points make up a triangle. So to begin with, we'll specify that triangle 1 is made up of points 0, 1, and 2. Notice that in this case, we're not specifying anything with regard to the position of the vertices. Just after that, we can specify that triangle 2 is made up of vertices 1, 3, and 4. And similarly, triangle 3 is made up of vertices 2, 4, and 5. If we were to include the fourth triangle, that would be made up of vertices 1, 4, and 2. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you can see that we've built our index buffer. Now, realize that we still have to move these six vertices onto the GPU, but now we have a new obligation. We have to move the index buffer over as well. So how big is this buffer? Well, if you look, we have 12 pieces of information. You'll notice that these are all positive values and they're ints. And therefore, if we stored it as a glue int, it would take up 48 bytes. However, if you were really clever, you'd notice that a glue int is overkill in this situation, and you could probably use a data type that doesn't take up a full four bytes. All right, let's do a comparison between the old way that we were doing it and using index buffers. Now realize that in both of these cases, a vertex is going to take up 48 bytes. However, without index buffers, we have four triangles that have three vertices each for a total of 12 vertices. Therefore, our total size is going to be four triangles times three vertices times 48 bytes each gives us 576 bytes. Now, if we do use index buffers, we still have a vertex that takes up 48 bytes, but in this case, we only have six of them. We've also already established that the index buffer for this example is 48 bytes. So therefore, the total size using index buffers is going to be six vertices times 48 bytes each plus 48 bytes for the index buffer gives us a total of 336 bytes. Now when we start getting into larger and larger models, you can see that this is going to cut down significantly on the amount of data that we have to move over to the GPU. You might also notice that because we haven't specified any redundant vertices, we've actually cut the number of vertices to process in half. Now what would the code look like? Before we do anything else, we're still going to use a vertex array object, and we're also going to load all of our vertex information onto the GPU. However, the new part is that we have to create an index buffer, and it's really similar to how we created vertex buffers. So in this first line of code, you can see that we've created a glue int called index VBO. The second line should look familiar too, 
we make a call to GL gen buffers telling the driver to create one buffer for us. And it puts the ID of that buffer into our variable index VBO. The third line of code looks familiar too, but notice that in this case when we call GL bind buffer, we have a different constant. We have GL element array buffer. And this is telling the driver that in this case we want an index buffer. If you remember in the previous tutorial when we were loading all the information, we passed GL array buffer instead. And then finally what we're going to do is to move that index buffer over onto the GPU. In this case, we're just going to call GL buffer data, passing it the size of the data as well as the data itself. Now in the render function, this is going to change the way that we draw our triangles. We're no longer going to use GL draw arrays. That's the way that you would do it if you didn't have an index buffer. Instead, we're going to call GL draw elements, passing it the constant GL triangles like we had before, the number of indices that we have, the kind of data that that index buffer is. In this case, it's GL unsigned int. And then the fourth parameter is null. All right, now if you remember back to the beginning of this tutorial, this is what we wanted to make, yet this is what we made. Now let me flip back and forth here between these two, and it's a very subtle difference, but if you notice, the color of the vertices is slightly different between these two images. Now you may be asking yourself why. This is one of the downsides of working with index buffers. Notice that we could only specify one color per vertex, whereas before we had redundant vertices that had different color information. So the lesson learned here is that if you want two pieces of color information attached to one vertex, you're going to have to replicate that vertex. So that's it. Hopefully you can see that there's a strong argument for using index buffers because they cut down significantly on the amount of information that we have to store and process. And also, conceptually, they're not very hard, so I'd recommend that you use them whenever you can.